believe that additional investigation is required because of the widespread exposure from vaccinating virtually the entire birth cohort of the United States. A, an animal that's frantically self-harming itself. It's partnered here. Uh, we have tail biters. About 40% of the animals after six months become self-mutilatory. He bites his tail. He grooms excessively. But he also grooms his partner. This animal, who wildly self-grooms, not only takes care of his partner, and they have wonderful protective uh, self protective dietal, uh, dyadic interactions, but they also, he also grooms, and he's groomed through the skull, and eventually um, destroys his partner. Just if one is considering just methyl mercury exposure through fish, uh, up to 16 percent. This was 8 percent as of uh, before last week, and now this has been doubled. Uh, because our data are insecure, um, they were basing the risk of children on maternal blood levels only, and it turns out that there was a great disparity between maternal and umbilical cord uh, blood levels of, of mercury. So th this went from 3,000 children to 600,000 children at risk, simply due to the levels of, uh, of uh, organic mercury present in their blood through dietary means. The question about how do we get into this mess and who are the vulnerable subsets of children that seem to be uh, affected by mercury? That I think it is time to reevaluate vaccine safety link between aerosol and neurodevelopment disorders in children has become more plausible. I agree with Dr. Potion seeing another group at MIT replicate the same thing with very close data is, is at least alarming and of concern. There is a causal relationship between thimerosal and autism. I'm a little bit embarrassed to stand here and listen to for Staten's work being presented after what, what they said at Simpson Group. And, and to, to listen to that the table doesn't contain uh, the, the error that we said. And uh, this, this, in my view, this is not a scientific issue. This is about as proven an issue as you're ever going to see. And what's, what's occurring here is a cover-up under the guise of protecting the vaccine uh, program. And I'm proud of that. not be able to process mercury, and as has already been said repeatedly today, there are multiple sources of mercury all over the place. I don't understand how uh, genetic variation is somehow manipulated by this environmental exposure. Well, the difference is when the, the ones that are being exposed to mercury from the mother's mouths, that's a very low rate that gets in there. So they're getting a very low rate over a long period of time. When the child's born, on the day he's born, He's given a bolus dose of ethyl mercury at a time when his biliary transport system isn't working, at a time when his kidneys are not working, and they're very successful. The board with AutismCanada.org. Can you comment on Congress, Congressman Melvin's observation about the conflicts of interest and growing relationship between CDC and pharmaceutical companies? Specifically, can you address that and not being available to being made available to independent researchers? along with the notion that any data presented by the CDC is inherently biased because they serve as a promoter of uh, vaccinations and as their own watchdog group. Well, I can just tell you my own case. I mean, my own case, I've tried to run, I have like over 25 years of epidemiologic research experience, to approach these studies in an objective and a scientific manner as possible. We had no affiliation, no support. I personally get no funding from uh, and none of my co-authors have any funding from the uh, uh, pharmaceutical industry. Um, in terms of access to, to data, the data for, for this study, we are making it uh, a public access database available. We have convened two prior scientific workshops in 2001 on this topic. This is one of five notebooks of material that we have on this topic that we have accumulated. I might add, they are double-sided. I will also say that the committee has read them. Um, believe me, they have read them.
you have only chosen uh, three vaccines that you give up. But you have excluded many other vaccines such as hepatitis B and so on. And you simply said you excluded them because they are given to Pakistan. Therefore, the concentration comparison is actually inaccurate in your investigation. That would be my understanding. My name is Boyd Hill, uh, New University of Kentucky. What I was wondering is if we were really comparing the two similar incidents, the rate of autism per 10,000 in Denmark compared to the United States and Britain. Could you tell me what those are? Okay. The rate of autism per 10,000 population in Denmark versus the United States and Britain, because uh, I'd like to know what they are, because you're showing two different vaccine schedules, one getting uh, mercury on the day they're born and uh, a much larger, faster rate. And so I'd like to know what is the rate per 10,000 of autistic children born in Denmark versus the United States and uh, Britain? I don't have any uh, numbers from the U.S. of Britain, but... Um, in, in our cohort, you can calculate the crude incidence rates from this uh, table here and from the... I, I know I can't, but I would expect you to know that. I mean, if you're kind of saying this, I mean, people know. I mean, that's what's printed in all the papers. I read your paper. You had some. I, I think that this answers function. your question. Um, I think we need to move on. Uh, the final spot. The FDL is that that's not the case. How do you account for that? You're talking about the Danish study. Well, so that's the reason I asked the young man the question. The, uh, it, we're comparing the apples to cows when we compare the American autism situation to the Danish situation. They're starting out at a very, very low rate of autism, right from the very start, compared to what we have in this country at this time. And so I, I don't, I think there probably are other factors that may happen uh, in utero that induce autism. But the, the rate of autism in Denmark, I think, is somewhere, I know I looked at this chocolate chart on the paper, it was the highest level was around five. And uh, depending upon the age group, the younger age group is even lower down to less than two. And in this country, I see numbers where it's 67 for 10,000. So I, I don't think that that uh, comparison of that, that piece of research is really very relevant. And Great Britain. Great Britain is what we're looking at. The epidemiological thing, I, I'm baffled by it. Uh, 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 just like everyone else would be, the second you see such desperate <coughs> such different results from people using the same database. So you're applying the epidemiology slide? I, I apply some of the epidemiology slide, yes. <laughs>